might turn the wrong key or start the wrong motor. I'd have to know how to do it before I did it. And that's the way with receiving the Holy Ghost. You've got to know what you are coming for and how to receive it and what it is. Now, the first place, the Holy Spirit has been promised we could take ten weeks and never just skip the age of this subject, what the Holy Spirit is. But the first thing I want to approach it, just enough to give an outline each night, then see the following night if there's any questions. How many in here has not received the Holy Ghost, been baptized with the Holy Ghost? Raise your hands. You know you haven't been. Just look at the hands. Now, <clears throat> I want to talk on it as the Holy Spirit being a sign. For it is a sign. We realize that that all promises is given to us by Abraham was the father of the promise. Because God gave the promise to Abraham and to his seed after him. The promise was made to Abraham and to his seed. And this sign is to a covenant people. Now, there is a vast difference between just a Christian and a Holy Ghost-filled Christian. And now, we're going to get this from the Scripture and place it just exactly in the Scripture. The first place there is a Christian professed to be a Christian. But if this Christian has not yet been filled with the Holy Ghost, he's only in process of being a Christian. See? He is professed to believe it. He's working to it. But God has not yet given him this spirit of the Holy Ghost. He's not yet reached that goal with God that God's recognized it. Because that God made a covenant with Abraham after he had called Abraham, which is a type of calling the believer today. He called Abraham, and Abraham moved out of his country and went into a strange land to dwell among strange people. And that was a type of when God calls a man to stop his meanness, repent of his sins, he turns then from the crowd that he was in to live in a new crowd among new types of people. And then after God found Abraham to be faithful to the promise that God gave him that he would have the child and through this child all the earth would be blessed, then God confirmed his faith by giving him a sign. And that sign was circumcision. And circumcision is a type of the Holy Spirit. Just the very next uh, verses of this chapter that we have just read. If you want to take it down. And the um, uh, Stephen said in the 51st verse, Ye stiff necks, uncircumcised in the heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. The circumcision is a type of the Holy Ghost. And God gave Abraham the, the circumcision sign after he had accepted God on his promise and walked out into a strange country. Amen. It was a sign. And all his children and his seed after him should have this sign in their flesh because it was a distinction. It was to separate them 
from all other peoples this sign of circumcision. And that's what God uses today. It's the sign of circumcision of the heart. The Holy Spirit that makes God's church a separated church from all other creeds, faiths, and denominations. They're in all kinds of denominations. But yet they are a separated people. You let me talk to a man two minutes. I can tell you whether he's received the Holy Ghost or not. So can you. It separates them. It's a mark. It's a sign. And the Holy Spirit is a sign. And it's any child that refused circumcision in the Old Testament, which was a foreshadow of the Holy Ghost was cut off from amongst the people. He could not have fellowship with the rest of the congregation if he refused to be circumcised. Now pattern that to today. A person that would refuse to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost can have no fellowship among those that has the Holy Ghost. You just can't do it. You have to be a nature. Like it's my mother there used to say, birds of a feather flock together. Well, it's an old proverb, but it's a true one. You don't see doves and crows fellowshipping. Their diets are different. Their habits are different. Their desires are different. That's the way it is with the world and with the Christian. When you have been circumcised by the Holy Spirit, which means to cut off a flesh. Circumcision could only be in the male. But if the woman was married to a man, she was part of him. She was circumcised with him. You remember in Timothy where it said, Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if she continues in faith and holiness with all sobriety. Now, circumcision. You know when the, Sarah laughed in the tent behind her at the message of the angel? When he said, Abraham, not knowing who he was, a stranger, where is thy wife Sarah? How did he know that he had a wife? As Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Remember, those signs wasn't committed down to Sodom and Gomorrah in the world, amongst the religionists. But it was to the elect, the called out. And Abraham was called out. And the word church means called out. The separated like Abraham separated himself and had been circumcised. And then when Sarah laughed at the very message of the angel, God would have killed her on the spot. But he could not bother Sarah without bothering Abraham because they were one. She was part of him. You're no longer twain but one. So, circumcision, the Holy Spirit, today circumcises the heart. And it's a sign. A given sign. Someone said the other day, I just repeat this, not as a joke, because it's the truth. But it sounds like a joke. As I've often said, this is no place for jokes. But there was a little German out on the west coast where we were just at, he received the Holy Ghost and he went down the street and he would walk a little piece and he'd raise up his hands and speak in tongues and he would run and he would jump and he would shout and he was at work carrying on like that and his boss said to him, Where have you been? Uh 
I like those places where you have been. He said, you must have been down amongst that bunch of nuts. He said, then you think they are nuts? He said, sure they are. He said, well, praise the Lord for the nuts. <laughs> and he said, do you know what? The nuts play a big part. He said, for instance, the automobile. You take all the nuts out of it, you ain't got nothing but a bunch of yunk. So that's just about right. <laughs> you are so different when the Holy Spirit comes on you until the mind of this world don't like you and they're against you and they don't want nothing to do with you at all. You're born of another world. You are just as much an alien, uh, ten times more alien you'd be if you'd go in the far flung regions of African jungles. Amen. You're different when the Holy Spirit comes. And it's a sign. It's a mark amongst the people. Now, you say then, Brother Branham, that sign of circumcision was given to Abraham. That is true. Unto his seed. Yes. All right. Now we are going to turn to Galatians. Third chapter. 29th verse. And see how that could apply to us. Galatians 3 and 29. And just see how this circumcision could apply to a Gentile. If we are Gentiles which by natural birth we are. Now the first, I want to read the 16th verse. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. Abraham and his seed. He said not unto seeds, uh, just any kind of a seed. Oh, I'm Abraham's seeds too. No. To a seed. Abraham's seed, not the seeds. As of many, but as of one, and to to they and to thy seed, which is Christ. Christ was Abraham's seed. Do you believe that? All right, now let's get the twenty eighth and twenty ninth verse. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither is there bond or free, neither is there male or female. For we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and are heirs according to the promise. How do we take on Abraham's seed? By being in Christ. Then we are Abraham's seed. And what was the seed of Abraham? As we might go on to Romans 4 in different places. Abraham never received the promise while he was circumcised to show that circumcision was just a type. He received the promise before he was circumcised. And it was a type of recognition of his faith that he had before he was circumcised. Now, when we are in Christ, we become Abraham's seed and are heirs with Christ. Therefore, no matter who we are, Jew or Gentile, and the seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham has the faith of Abraham who takes God at His Word, regardless of how ridiculous it seems, how unusual you act, how peculiar it makes you, you take God at His Word regardless of anything. Amen. Abraham at 75 years old and Sarah at 65 took God at His Word and called anything contrary to it as though it wasn't. Amen. 
What do you think the doctors thought of that day? What do you think the people thought? When they seen an old man, 75 years old, going around praising God, he's going to have a baby by his wife and her 65 years old, about 25 years past menopause. But you see, it makes you act funny. The faith of Abraham. And when you're circumcised of the Holy Ghost, it does the same thing to you. It makes you do things that you didn't think you would do. It makes you take God's promise and believe God. Now, it's also, besides, a, see, a promise and a sign, it's also a seal. Now, if you will go with me unto Romans, uh, first I want you to go with me to uh, Ephesians 4.30. And let's read here just a minute. Ephesians 4.30 says this. Now you've heard so many people say that different things are seals. If you go into the church, you have the seal of the church. And some people says it's keeping a certain day, a Sabbath day. That's, that's a seal of God. Some of them says if we put our membership into a certain denomination, we are sealed into the kingdom of God. Now the Bible said... Let every man's word be a lie, and God's be the truth. Now, Ephesians 4.30 reads like this. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. I'm going to have to get a little bit hard on this now. Lay down, uh, you legalist brother, and just hold quiet for a little bit. Did you notice how long that seal lasts? Not to the next revival. Until the next time something goes wrong. Until the day of your redemption. That's how long you're sealed. Until the day of your redemption. When you are redeemed up to be with God, that's how long the Holy Spirit seals you. Not from revival to revival, but from eternity to eternity. Amen. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's a seal of God. Amen. That He's found, you found grace in His sight. Hallelujah. And He loves you and He believes you. And He's put His seal upon you. What is a seal? Anyone, a seal designates or means a finished work. Amen. God has saved you, sanctified you, cleaned you up, found favor with you, and sealed you. He's finished. You're His product until the day of your redemption. The seal is a finished thing. What is the Holy Ghost? It's a sign. We're going to get on that a little later on in another message. The sign that Paul spoke of. Tongues was a sign to believers or unbelievers. Now, notice, but in this, the Holy Ghost is a sign. I mean, and the Holy Ghost is a seal. It's a sign that God gave to His chosen children to reject it is to be cut from the people and to receive it is to be finished. With the world and all the things of the world. Hallelujah. And to be a product that God has put a seal of approval on. I used to work on the railroad out here with Harry Waterbury. And we would go down to load a car. My brother Doc, standing back there, helps load cars. When a car's being loaded, they go through that car, the inspector, and if he finds anything loose, swart, or fall and break, or anything that would destroy, he'll not seal that car until that car is so completely packed, until it's so packed down and so in order that 
the shaking of the ride won't bother the product that's on the inside. That's what's the matter. We don't get sealed so much. We're too loose about things. When the inspector goes through to inspect your life, to see if you're not just a little loose about things, a little loose about your prayer life, a little loose about that temper. A little loose about that tongue to talk about others. He'll never seal the car. Some dirty habits. Some vile things. Some vulgarity mind. He can't seal the car. But when he's found everything in his place, the inspector, then he seals it. There be anybody. Open that seal until that car has reached its destination of where it's sealed for. Amen. There it is. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. For I say unto you, it be better for you that a millstone was hanged at your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea than even to try to uh, offend or shake a little. On the least of these that's been sealed. You see what it means? That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's your assurance. It's your protection. It's your witness. It's your seal. It's your sign that I'm heaven bound. Don't care what the devil says. I'm heaven bound. Why? He sealed me. He gave it to me. He sealed me into His kingdom and I'm glory bound. Hallelujah. Let the winds blow. Let's... I just love the Word. It's the truth. Now, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, what is the Holy Ghost? It is the Spirit of Christ in you. Amen. Now before we read, I'd just like to say a few commenting words here. What is the Holy Ghost? It's a seal. What is the Holy Ghost? It's a covenant. What is the Holy Ghost? It's a sign. What is the Holy Ghost then? It's a, the Spirit of Jesus Christ in you. A little while, said Jesus, that the world sees me no more. Yet you shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Spirit of God, in His church, what for? What did He do it for? This is a little on tomorrow night's subject, but what did He do it for? Why did He, why did the Holy Spirit do? What, what did He come for? What did He come in you for? What did He come in me for? Was to continue the works of God. I always do that which is pleasing to my Father. I come not to do my own will, but the Father that sent me. And the Father that sent me is with me. And as my Father has sent me, so send I you. Oh my! The Father sent him, went in him. The Father that sent Jesus came in him, worked to him. The Jesus that sent you goes with you and is in you. And if that Spirit living in Jesus Christ made him do an act the way he did, you'll have some general idea how to do when it's in you. Because that life cannot change. It'll go from body to body, but it cannot change its nature, for it is God. Now, in John 14, just let's read just a little bit, beginning at the 10th verse. Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The works, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Think of that. 
Now, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in